Good morning, investors. Welcome to another TipRanks webinar. My name is Ari Gutman, a customer success manager here at TipRanks. I'm happy to join you all yet again for another webinar. If you are brand new to the TipRanks webinar series, and this is the very first webinar you are joining us for, I'd like to share with you that we keep it really simple webinar to webinar so all of our community members can have an understanding of not only tip ranks, but what's going on economically, and they work hand in hand. So before we even get to talking about the tip ranks tool, a tip ranks feature of the week this week that we're going to be highlighting, I want to briefly go over our economic backdrop because as I say webinar to webinar and understanding that economic backdrop you're going to become not only a better investor, but be able to pick out the right tip ranks tools to help you out right now, given our economic environment. Now, I will share with you to keep you on your toes that we do have one of our very own tip ranks in-house analysts with us who will be speaking and joining me on this webinar to discuss our economic backdrop and the tool of the week that we're going to be going over today on this very webinar. So without further ado, Let's kick it into gear and talk just briefly about our economic backdrop, what happened last week, what we can expect moving into the remainder of this week, and do our best, again, to paint this economic picture for ourselves. So in the weeks ahead, it's not too surprising to us, should there be more volatility or less volatility. Last week, we had Jerome Powell come out and share with us the next interest rate hike decision, which was ultimately a rise in interest rates, which hopefully, if you are joining me on these webinars, was not too much of a surprise. As we've been saying, the Federal Reserve has been pretty hawkish and adamant about fighting inflation to get down to an inflationary goal of 2%. So Jerome Powell did, in fact, come out. He raised interest rates by another 25 basis points. That allows for that terminal rate right now to reside at 4.75% to about 5% in that window. Now, moving forward into the remainder of the year, we are expecting, of course, a lot of uncertainty to continue to unfold, if you will. And that is because with interest rates higher than anticipated and likely to remain higher than anticipated for the remainder of the year, businesses will certainly experience more stress and, of course, more pressure. So ultimately, what we're going to be seeing, perhaps, is a light to mild recession. And that is across the board, various economists sharing so, as well as Jerome Powell himself, sharing that he expects a bumpy road ahead here in 2023. And the Federal Reserve came out pretty dovish in raising rates by 25 basis points. However, I will share with you that does not mean that the Federal Reserve is done hiking interest rates. Because they already had the mindset of raising interest rates prior to the banking crisis of 50 basis points, it's likely we could very well see another 25 basis point rate hike to come. However, we have to remain on our toes as investors, data set by data set, scrutinize and analyze each one of those economic data sets. Now, the tool of the week that I want to get to today is actually our tip ranks smart investor. It is our flagship newsletter. And the reason being is because this is the very newsletter that it's going to give every investor the key insights that we need on a week to week basis. Now, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the webinar, we have our very own in-house analyst that's joining us for this call. So I'd like to welcome Yulia Weiman, who has 15 years as a senior analyst at an outside portfolio management company. Now, she specifically had focused on macroeconomics capital markets, as well as what I think is very interesting mix here, a political risk analysis. Hello, everyone. Right, Julia, welcome Hi. to our Tip Ranks webinar. It is a pleasure and an honor to have you join us. Now, you did join us on Monday, and we got to talking a lot about our current economic environment. And so the very first question that I want to ask you on today's webinar is, is pretty simple and it's pretty macro, but what are your current thoughts on where we stand right now economically? Well, uh, so far, up until now, uh, the U.S. economy defied all the expectations with regards to its resilience. Uh, notwithstanding uh, various data points to, that point to some weakening of the economy, it is still looking very strong. 
Of course, the high inflation and the rising interest rates now begin to have stronger and stronger effect on different economic sectors. Inflation is coming down, but not as much as the Fed would like it to. So if not for the uh, recent uh, string of uh, bank collapses and uh, a hate to sentiment coming from the uh, European banking, banking troubles, the main problem for the Fed would be to raise rates just enough to bring down inflation without pushing the economy into a, a hard recession. But now that it has a, a bank, it has to uh, think about the banking system, it's even more difficult to juggle all these problems together. And the problem is that the, um, the tools that, that, that Fed is using to, to uh, support the banking system, like injecting liquidity, are inflationary while raising rates are uh, aimed are are being aimed at uh, bringing down inflation so we have to wait and see how it goes further on from here uh, and whether we'll see more trouble in the banking system so i'll double down on on this question now because i know as i always say in each webinar i can't predict the future but as a macroeconomist and someone who really scrutinizes a lot of the data sets, like yourself, I mean, we have to look into the future, at least, you know, what I'm always sharing with fellow investors is that what happened in the past, it happened in the past. As an investor, we need to be forward thinking, looking into the future to the best that we can to paint a picture for ourselves where we may be. Do you have any sort of outlook for how the remainder of 2023 could look? I mean, six months from now, one year out, where could we be? What, what do you see on the horizon for us? Well, um, I will probably not surprise you by saying that uh, currently uh, the base case is a mild uh, recession, uh, starting somewhere in the second or third quarter of this year. And um, we see uh, the, uh, uh, the economy contracting mildly for about two or three quarters in a row with the uh, with the economic rebound starting in 2024. Of course, what's more important uh, for investors is the outlook for the stock markets. And we know from history that stock markets usually slip out the end of the recession a few months before the end of the recession and start rallying a few months before the recession ends. So if the base case plays out as we expect, we may see a big rally in the markets towards the end of this year. Of course, we have to take into account that there are other scenarios. Uh, the best case scenario is a soft landing, which means that, uh, that the inflation slows, but growth, growth is still there, but it, the, the economy is growing, but much slower slow enough to bring down the inflation and the the downside scenario the one we don't want to see is the uh is a banking crisis and the hard landing of the economy uh, currently we don't see um these two scenarios as having a large a, a big probability but we we want to wait and see uh, the different data sets and different developments in the banking system, and we may update our outlook further on. You know, it sounds like okay, time will take time. But what I've been hearing a lot of across the board, and you already alluded to it, is like base case. There's going to be that perhaps light to mild recession. Now, again, no one can predict the future. We can only do our best to get hold of the tools that we have. You know, on tip ranks and really dive into the positions that will suit us well for perhaps uncertainty that is on the horizon. Are there certain sectors that we should be looking into? Uh, yes, of course. Well, bearing a uh, depression, we don't want to talk about that scenario now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not very plausible in my eyes, at least. Um, bearing 
that there are always sectors that do better in the recession, uh, but there are also subsectors or industries in each sector that, that can do better than the broad sector. For example, if you look at the uh, consumer goods sector, uh, when the uh, um, consumer feel uh, that they have less disposable income, less money to spend, they'll prefer retailers that they, they uh, that demonstrate uh, that can demonstrate value for money, which means that they will probably abandon luxury goods or niche retailers and and the um, come over to discount stores and uh, wholesale clubs. Another example might be the tech sector. We like the tech sector in general, although it used to be um, seen as a cyclical sector, uh, reacting strongly to the economic changes. In recent years, everybody, all humanity has become so dependent on technology that we believe that now is much less cycle, cyclical. The demand for these uh, goods and services is much stickier than in the past. But of course, there are some headwinds for the technology sectors, like uh, uh, there is no more abundance of uh, uh, cheap sources of uh, capital. There is this headwind of a uh, higher cost of capital lower ad revenues, and of course, stronger dollar that weighs on international revenues. So in the tech sector, we prefer the larger stabler companies that are financially sound and that, they are, and that are market leaders. We also like the healthcare sector in general, of course, the stabler, and the profitable companies within the sector. Um, historically, the healthcare sector shown that in recessions, it was its earnings were, were much more resilient than in other sectors. And we expect this to happen in this recession as well. What I love is that you actually mentioned three sectors that we have spoken about not too long ago. We spoke about for sure, the consumer goods sector last week, as well as the healthcare sector. And then a couple of weeks prior to that, we were talking about the tech sector. Last week, we really dove into the stock screener tool and we found ourselves taking a deeper look into the consumer goods sector and understanding that regardless of whether the economy is up, down, left or right, anything in the middle, people need to go to the store and buy their personal goods, care items. And likewise with healthcare, regardless of an economic downswing, People are going to be worried about their health, longevity of their lives, just living an overall healthy life. These are sectors that we should be looking into. But the interesting mix here that you really spoke about now, for me at least, is the tech sector. Because you're sharing that no matter what, at least longer term, tech is going to be there. And although it might be a bit volatile right now, I think it goes hand in hand with something I've shared previously on many webinars is that it's really looking into businesses with three pieces of criteria. And that's going to be companies that have great leadership. So good management teams, companies that have a very strong brand name. And of course, if we could find them, the companies with clean balance sheets, so little to no debt. And you know, with that piece of criteria, that's going to be our ideal, regardless of the state of the market, but the opportunities are coming about now, now, what I love about Yulia and having her on the webinar with us today and talking about our tool of the week here, it's the TipRanks Smart Investor Newsletter. Now, that is the flagship newsletter of TipRanks. And Yulia actually happens to be the brains behind the operation to the TipRanks Smart Investor, of course, with all of her experience, 15 years working as a senior analyst. So, Yulia, I want to ask you, how is the Smart Investor newsletter accommodating to the current economic conditions that we're experiencing? Well, we have initially built the Smart Investor as a portfolio of stocks to hold for the medium to long run. 
So by definition, it doesn't include highly speculative uh, bets. It mostly includes uh, solid companies that are profitable and have a responsible and predictable management. But now with this, in a, this situation that we are in now, we are taking even more cautious stance and we are skewing, we are moving even more towards uh, larger companies that are market leaders uh, that can be more stable in this vol volatile markets that have healthier fundamentals, lower debt, higher profitability and solvencies, lots of cash, etc. Um, we are making these changes on margins where we see uh, that the change is needed and putting strong, very strong emphasis on quality. Quality companies are uh, have, have proven themselves to uh, withstand different economic headwinds in uh, statistically in uh, previous recessions uh, quality companies performed better than the broad market moreover they performed better than the broad markets one to three years after the federal reserve stopped hiking rates i, I want to ask you flat out yulia why should an investor even consider buying the tip rank smart investor? It's one of the easiest questions I've ever heard. Basically, <laughs> the smart investor is, a, is an act actively managed portfolio. It's like if you had your own a portfolio management company, but without the price tag and without the high, the, the high minimum investment limit, that portfolio management companies have. You have us managing your portfolio, making all the changes, researching the changes that we make, outlining all everything we do on a weekly basis, conveying all the changes and the reasons behind the changes. All there is left for you to do is enjoy the returns. I love it. That's the best part. Enjoy the returns. Of course, the Smart Investor comes out every single Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. for investors to sift through, to analyze, to understand what's going on economically, to prep themselves as investors and empower themselves as investors. So as I mentioned, right now, we actually have our quarter two earnings sale that's going on. I'm strongly recommending for each and every investor on this webinar to jump on to the tip rank site, head over to that checkout page and take full advantage. Right now it is 30% off to become a tip ranks premium member. And of course, go a step further here and actually subscribing to the tip ranks smart investor newsletter and investors are looking forward to seeing each and every one of you back next week. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you all next week.